Whenever I look for new games to play, I have a tendency to look for games that immediately grab my attention and how they differentiate themselves from similar titles, and Diaries of a Spaceport Janitor certainly fulfilled that simple criteria. When I first laid my eyes on this game, I immediately fell in love with the aesthetics of its visual design. I was in awe at the vibrant pastel colors that painted this world as jolly, and I was hooked when I had noticed the contrasting builds of the character and level designs. Not to mention that the title of this game reminded me of my past that I had left behind. I have seen other games that have tried to do something similar, but this game seemed different to me. While other games have tried to be ironically amusing with the idea of playing as a janitor, this game seemed to take a more realistic approach to the fulfillment of having that job, but instead of stopping there, expanding it into becoming more than just about that. This game instead puts you into the shoes of a janitor in a seemingly fleshed out world that was begging to be explored. So because I loved the interesting aesthetic of this world, and I was curious to know how the game would spin the tale of a mundane life as a janitor, I knew that I had to play this game. After ignorantly choosing which goddess I wanted to favor, and being briefly introduced to who I would be roleplaying, I was immediately dropped near a water mill and sent off to complete my duties. I became the spaceport janitor, and my responsibilities were simple. Pick up any trash I found, and incinerate it in order to make a living. Although this task may have sounded boring, the colorful architecture that surrounded me, the bustling streets full of odd and exotic aliens, and the sounds of a thriving marketplace were more than enough to keep me entertained. Eager to explore every inch of this strange new world, I set off to clean the streets and find out what else I could possibly do and discover. As I was picking up trash, I quickly noticed that I had the option to keep whatever I picked up and put it into a storage compartment, otherwise known in this world as an Incinitron. This was very interesting to me, since the game never mentioned in the introduction that I could do this, let alone its purpose. With this new discovery, I started to bag as much interesting stuff as I could carry in the hopes that something would happen, and little did I know, something would definitely happen soon. While I was picking up trash, I stumbled across a crumpled note that had a very interesting message on it. It simply stated that there was treasure in the dungeons. Excited at the possibilities of what it could mean, I immediately kept it to see if I could read further into the note. Instead of getting more information, a message simply appeared on the left corner of my screen stating that I could now view my quest log. At this point, I thought that this game couldn't get any better. I had no clue that there were quests that I could complete in this game, let alone dungeons, so I quickly opened up the quest log to find out what it wanted me to do next. Suddenly, I'm greeted by a to-do list of things I needed to complete. Included in this list was not only my usual duty of incinerating trash, but it also told me to enter the dungeon and find the treasure. Excited to see where this quest would take me, I set out to find the location of this elusive dungeon. After perusing random wares from well-off merchants, chatting with some of the locals, and running into walls clearly preventing me from fully exploring the rest of the area, I finally found the dungeon's entrance, but it was not where I had expected it to be. The sewer dungeon was actually some sort of building that looked like an ancient robot head, clearly not from my time. Unfortunately, I also learned that I could not enter the dungeon unless I ate an item called the Eye of Beb. So after looking around some more at items that I could never dream of buying, I found somebody named Heather who surprisingly gave me a little bit of lore about the planet we were standing on. Apparently, the planet was full of underground dungeons filled with loot yet to be discovered. With my mind filled to the brim with expectations, I bought the eye from her, went to the dungeon's entrance, ate the eye, and waited with excitement at the possibilities of what would happen next.
Suddenly, I wake up on a mattress in a shabby room with only a chest and the same goddess I favored earlier sitting next to me. I also found myself in different clothes from earlier that was more fit for relaxing than working, and so I concluded that this must be where I lived. But as normal as the living situation seemed, it was far from that perception since the same skull that I encountered in the sewer dungeon earlier followed my every step around the apartment. Confused and startled by the random and blaring roars of the ominous skull, I turned on the prey station which laid in front of my favorite goddess and got paid for my previous day of work. After that, I hurried out of my apartment to see if my strange situation would change. Unfortunately, it didn't. But, when I stepped outside, a lady that I had never seen before was standing near the entrance and I had a feeling that she would know what was happening to me. As expected, I was apparently cursed. She explained to me that I entered a planetary dungeon of sorts and willingly went looking for this fate. Confused as to why I would do such a thing, she then gave me some useful advice on how to get rid of this curse. Basically, all I had to do was gather three pieces of a tablet which would instruct me on how to get rid of the skull. So with my new path set in stone, there was nothing else for me to do but set out on my new quest to find the pieces of the tablet and free myself from this curse. I won't spoil any further plot details, but essentially, the world was open for me to explore and I had the opportunity to get to know the spaceport better. This leads into what I think is one of the best qualities of this game. As I was looking for trash to incinerate and exploring the different districts, I couldn't help but feel overwhelmed and surprised by the scale of this world. The game does a great job at making the player feel like they're inside a world that is full of life. Because I was given the freedom to explore and discover things on my own through interactions, admittedly, I felt lost when it came time to do whatever I wanted. Even though I was given hints on the loading screens about how to know where I am and such, every street and vendor I passed still looked almost the same to me. Not because I found fault in the visual design, but because it felt like I was literally stepping into a new city for the first time and my brain was trying to familiarize itself in this new environment. As I played more and more, eventually, I did notice some details and landmarks that allowed me to differentiate each district and navigate the spaceport more confidently. But it still amazed me to no end to see how well the world was built to make me feel some slight anxiety about not knowing where I was. And because I was encouraged to interact with others in order to discover things about the spaceport, I realized that there was so much lore seeped into the cracks of every weird landmark in that world that it made me want to know more. For example, near my apartment is a huge blade sticking out from the ground which I didn't notice until a couple of play sessions later. This landmark was so interesting to me because it made me curious about how this thing got there and where it came from. Apparently, the blade was actually a weapon from some war fought long ago on the planet and nowadays people would just rub up against it in order to bring themselves good luck. Even though it would have been nice to read some direct history about some landmarks by perhaps buying a book about them, it's still interesting to get some information from the locals and infer about the history of the spaceport you're residing in. Another important thing I learned while exploring was how superstitious the inhabitants of the spaceport were. Luck is not only something that matters to the spiritual aspect to this society, but it also affects how well you can make a living and accomplish your goals. Every district has a different goddess they favor, and they are all unique from each other in what they represent. Not only that, but many believe whoever you favor and pray to the most will affect whatever aspect of your life that goddess represents. For example, the goddess that I favored is named Onus, and she is the goddess of interiors, time, and the cosmos. Businesses tend to favor a goddess named Louster, who is the goddess of loot, influence, and good deeds. Many who favor Louster believe that by praying and giving offerings to this goddess, it will bring good luck to their businesses. There are altars scattered throughout the districts of these goddesses that you can freely pray to and give offerings in order to increase your luck. Depending on how lucky you're feeling, you can also try your luck at a lotto shrine to get free stuff that may include rare items or food that you could only dream of obtaining. As far as how it matters gameplay wise, luck will play a big part in how fast you can complete some quests, so it's important to check that your luck is favorable, or else you'll be stuck with that cursed skull for a while. 
The game also does a wonderful job of creating the experience of living as a janitor for a spaceport. Every day I would wake up, check my luck, get paid, and go out to pick up some trash in order to hopefully earn enough to get through the day. Beyond the repetitive nature of this routine was an opportunity to explore what this world was all about and get to know some of the inhabitants who roamed the spaceport. Most of the time, I would run into aliens who spoke a language I couldn't understand, and others who were very rude due to who I was. But then, I would sometimes run into aliens who actually had something interesting to say. For example, I learned about these aliens named Red Scarves who roamed around the spaceport. Basically, they're a mysterious militia group who go around bullying others and making the lives of aliens difficult. Sometimes, they would even take some of my money if I got on their nerves. There are also other features in this game that try to simulate what it's like to live as an alien in such a world. One feature that comes to mind is making sure you eat the right foods or else you'll get sick and tired faster. This can be quite troublesome since it could mean that you won't be able to do your job efficiently. One feature that I was not expecting was that you could actually change genders periodically by purchasing an item to eat at a gender changing kiosk. I discovered this feature only because I thought there was something wrong with my game when in fact all I needed to do was get my gender change. You'll know that you need to do this when all the text on the screen gets smeared and you start to trip out visually. Although I can't think of a justification for having this feature other than to keep me spending my money, it's still interesting to think that gender is treated as a fluid idea in this world. To top it all off, you'll even have the opportunity to write in a journal and reflect about your day before you go to sleep. All of these features and more helped me become immersed in this world and made me feel like I was actually role-playing as a spaceport janitor. Of course, with as much praise I can give to this game, there are some things that I felt could have helped made my experience a bit smoother. For example, I would often be subjected to a noticeable drop in frame rates when it came to me being in a place with lots of things going on. The gameplay may also get repetitive once you are familiar with the mechanics of the game. At a certain point, if you want to get through the quest at a faster rate, you're going to need a lot of money in order to accommodate your basic needs and get certain items to complete a certain quest. But in order to get more money, you're either going to need to pick up as much trash as possible or get really good luck and find rare items that you can sell. Speaking of which, selling items in this game seems to have been made more difficult than it needed to be. In this game, you can only sell items that certain merchants are selling. So if the merchant is selling a rare sword, they will only buy off that specific sword from you if you manage to find it. This way of doing things became a nightmare because oftentimes, I would get a rare item that I know is valuable but then can't find the specific merchant who wants it because there are so many merchants spread throughout the spaceport. It's difficult to find who you're looking for unless you go through each vendor and try to remember who sells what in a specific district. Even if you did memorize what every merchant sold, it isn't guaranteed that some of them would sell the same items the next day since it seems that the items are set randomly and changed day by day. This can make it very frustrating to try and sell something in this game because it can feel like a chore to find the right merchant. Therefore, you're going to find yourself doing most of the same things that seem to work best over and over again if you're not that interested in the exploration part of the game. For me personally, these issues became more noticeable the longer I played this game and it unfortunately holds this game back from being excellent. I also think that this game at times didn't go far enough with what you can do around the spaceport. Most of the time you'll be spending in this game is simply doing your job and hoping to gather enough money to hopefully get to eat the next day. The act of trying to complete quests without enough money sometimes felt so hopeless that it made me feel discouraged from seeing how things would play out since I had to resort to doing something that worked in the past over and over again until I earned enough money. The progression in this game can get excruciatingly slow and made me feel like it hurt the pacing and my enjoyment of trying to finish the game. I think if there were more ways to earn money and interact with the spaceport, it would make this game a lot more interesting to consistently play. Finally, I could go on and on about what features this game doesn't have and the repetitive nature of the gameplay, but at the end of the day, I could confidently say that I did enjoy my time playing this game. When I look back at what I took away from this experience, I feel like this game was not meant to be played with the goal of reaching the end, 
but instead to enjoy the act of taking things slow and learning about the world. I failed to mention a lot of features and things that I discovered in this game, but I think it's best if I left it that way. That feeling of discovering something you found on your own is something that I think was the best quality of this game and something that I think you all should get the opportunity to experience as well. Therefore, I encourage those of you who are interested in playing this game to make it a goal of yours to learn as much about the eccentric space sports as you can. Rest assured, there are plenty of surprises to be discovered, and although Diaries of a Spaceport Janitor may not be a game that will impress people with how much it can do, its emphasis on role-playing and world design will certainly win the hearts of those who are looking for a small yet satisfying adventure.